Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new, I'm Serene, and today's video is all about my postpartum must-haves, specifically if you had a C-section. Now, if you did not have a C-section and you're a first-time mama who is going to deliver any day now or in the near future, I do have a postpartum recovery prep video for vaginal delivery, and that video is linked in the cards as well as in the description box below. I had an unexpected C-section, honestly, an emergency C-section, and if you wanna know more about that, I talk about it in my birth story which you can watch here or linked in the description box but this is all about what I wish I had ready on hand and the items that I found the most helpful in my c-section postpartum recovery so all of these items for the most part I did already have on hand there were some items I wish I had more of and I'll talk about that so if you know you're going to have a c-section you can prep properly and hopefully these items will make your recovery a little bit more comfortable because the postpartum period is very challenging, especially if you're a new mama like myself. I prepped as much as I could, but there's so many things I just didn't know. And because we had a very difficult labor and delivery, which ended with an emergency C-section, I just had so much happening and I probably should film my postpartum recovery room story, but I found these items very, very helpful. And this is the bare minimum. Obviously, this is my must-haves and you can go with less, you can get more items. I think it's always better to be more prepared than underprepared because when you come home, you really want to have everything you might need already in the home, at least a couple extras to get you through that first couple of weeks, especially if you're trying to just stay home and not have to run out and get errands or if it's just you and your husband or you and your partner, you don't want to have to send someone out. I know for me, I felt very anxious if I needed Chris to go run an errand for us. Luckily, there's a lot of um, next day shipping, uh, delivery, same day delivery options with your grocery stores, and even with Target, you can use a delivery service, but it's just a lot easier to have it on hand, especially when you first get home from that hospital and maybe you don't have that support system with friends and family nearby. In no particular order, but I will try to go from like things I use the most of down to the things that I don't think is as necessary, but definitely very, very helpful. However, everything in this video is a must have for me. And if I were to have my baby again, or if I were to have another baby with the same kind of circumstances of a C-section, these are the things I know I either must have immediately either in the hospital bag or by my bedside for when I come home. The first item I have is a heat pad. Now, I used this immediately when I got home from the hospital, and I think I used it like all day, every day. Anytime I was in bed, I was using this, and I still use it now, just not quite as much six weeks postpartum. So the reason I recommend this for both a C-section and vaginal birth is because it really helps with any of that ache, achiness, soreness, and pain. For me, I had a lot of achiness around my midsection. Your uterus is also still contracting, especially if you are breastfeeding. So a lot of the times you might have cramping when you're breastfeeding. This really helps soothe that. I was also really, really cold. That was something that was very unexpected was how cold I would get. And that was because one, one, I had complications, and two, I delivered in the winter, and three, I think my body was just in shock. Throughout my entire pregnancy, I was really hot, and I even brought fans for labor and delivery, but I was so cold during labor and delivery, and even throughout um, my postpartum care. So this was really, really beneficial. I actually originally had a heat pack because of breastfeeding. I knew that my uterus was most likely going to be contracting back to its size, and that can ca cause a lot of cramping, especially when you're nursing. So I had this on hand for that purpose, but this, I slept with it, I lounged with it it's just amazing and even now I use it when I sleep and I continue to use it when I'm nursing just to kind of help with everything and I still experience some low back pain shoulder pain and cramping here and there so this is just very very comforting and helpful 
and I will link the ones that I used in the description box. You can purchase it if you want to or not, but you don't need to. You don't need to bring this to the hospital necessarily because they do have hot packs. So for labor and delivery, I used the hot packs the hospital had, and then in postpartum, I just bundled up in blankets because I wanted to get out of there as quickly as possible. So it's something that you can decide whether or not you have room for in your hospital bag. Oh, and I will be doing a reacting to my hospital bag of things that I actually used, things I didn't use, and what I wish I brought. Next item are compression socks. Now, depending on your hospital, you may or may not have compression socks, also depending on your situation. So I developed a lot of swelling during the end of my labor and especially afterwards because of all of the medication and drugs they were pumping through me through the IV, I just swelled a lot after my C-section. And something that is a big concern is blood clots, especially in the legs. So they have these machines that kind of like squeeze your calves and your legs until you can get up and start moving. But even when you start getting up and moving around, you're spending a lot of time on your back and in bed or just sitting so you're not moving around as much and there's so much swelling happening that I think it's better to just have some compression socks with you so that you can pull these on immediately after they remove the um, squeezy thing and they did give me socks but they weren't quite compression socks so this would have been a lot nicer and also help with a lot of the swelling that I was experiencing right after delivery and also you want to have these for when you go home because my swelling did last maybe three or four days after coming home from the hospital. I did leave the hospital after only one full day staying there in postpartum. So I stayed there um, overnight after my surgery and then another full day and then we left the next morning. I wanted to be discharged as soon as possible and I was getting up and I was progressing in my recovery. So they discharged me and allowed me to go home for the rest of my recovery. So if you stay at the hospital longer, you might not need the compression socks, but I felt like I needed them when I got home and luckily I did have them. They're also really good to have during pregnancy and I have a 20 hacks for pre every pregnant woman and I definitely included compression socks. So it's a good investment to invest in for your entire pregnancy as well as into your postpartum recovery. Belly bands. Now, I had a little bit of drama in terms of sizing with my belly bands because I purchased mine originally before I delivered and I was pretty much in my third trimester I think I was like 36 weeks when I ordered my belly band and I wasn't anticipating how much swelling I was gonna have right after delivery so I kind of guesstimated the best I could and the original belly band I purchased is the belly bandit luxe belly band which I'm currently wearing now not in this video but what I've been wearing um, currently in my recovery. So this one is definitely a little bit more secure. It's more of like a corset, I feel like. It definitely offers a lot of back support because it goes all the way up underneath my bra. And then it doesn't sit quite as low as I thought it would, but it's it's been very nice. So this one is the one that I'm currently wearing and I highly, highly recommend Belly Bandit belly bands. I just think they make the best ones. They're higher quality and they really do the job. They're also really known for postpartum belly band care. So this is the one I'm currently wearing, but that did not fit me right after delivery. So I purchased the Belly Bandit original band and I got it in a large because I was so swollen. I feel like I was more pregnant at the end of my delivery or right after delivery than I was actually at the um, end of my pregnancy. So this is the original one and I purchased the large just to be safe because I figured I could always cinch it really, really tight. This one I actually really liked immediately after delivery because it's a little bit more simple. It's a little bit more flexible. I wore this walking around, sleeping, sitting. I wore as much as I possibly could because right after delivery, I felt so 
weird in the center. Granted, I was numb for a while, but right after the numbness wore off and I was getting up and trying to hold Lillian and trying to like move around, I felt so strange and it was so uncomfortable and I just felt like my guts were gonna slip out of me and I couldn't really like use my core. It was just so strange. My doctor okayed a belly band right away. So I ordered this next day shipping and I put this on. I actually think you might wanna get two belly bands for your postpartum recovery. One for immediately after delivery, which is gonna be a larger size just to be safe. And also something a little bit more flexible like this one, a little bit more simple. There's no boning in the back and it was just, it's got enough compression and it's also got enough support, but not quite as dramatic as the Lux one. So this is the type I would recommend after delivery right away for the first week or two. And then I would say, get yourself something that's a little bit more structured, even more compressed, uh, even offers more compression. So this one has boning in the back. This goes all the way up to the back of my bra band and it offers so much more back support as you continue your recovery and start moving around a little bit more. I have a lot of stairs in my home and I'm also just a very active person. So this supports my low back, it supports my mid back. It really reminds me to engage my core. It also is a lot smaller than the large. So this is the extra small and I have a 10 inch extender because I'm not quite an extra small yet. I'm technically a small in belly bandit sizing currently, but my normal size is going to be an extra small. So I'm going to be able to easily remove the 10 inch extender like that. And then I can continue to use the Lux belly bandit. And this one is just going to help me continue to put everything back in its place and continue that recovery. So the cool thing about these are that they're pretty um, adjustable. So if your budget is only for one, I would say just go with the original one and then you can get a size smaller and get the extender. This way it will last you through most of your postpartum recovery depending on your size and how quickly you, you tend to lose weight. So most of my weight gain was the swelling and now everything's kind of just like back in its place, but it, uh, it still feels a little loose. So I still like to wear a belly band while I'm around the house, especially during our afternoon walks and any activity where I know I'm gonna be up and about more, I love having that band. So it just supports me nice and tight and makes me feel like I'm being hugged and more secure. And if you're nursing and breastfeeding, you will have relaxin going through your system even longer. So these bands will be more effective even longer throughout your postpartum. So you can wear these bands all the way um, into a couple of months of your postpartum. So they're a great investment. Some insurances even cover a belly band. So I'd look into that and I really recommend the two I showed you today. The next item is a fancy, uh, I can never say this word, perennial bottle. Now you'll get a couple at the hospital that you can take home. They have them for you at the hospital. So I didn't actually use this at the hospital because I knew they had one for me and it's just easier that way. But this one I had for when I got home and this is the Freedom Mom one from the labor and delivery kit. So the reason I recommend this one is just cause it's so much easier than the hospital one and you only have to fill it up once to kind of like rinse everything down there. So when when you deliver via c-section only like you didn't push you didn't try to deliver vaginally you're not going to be bleeding quite as much and there's not necessarily going to be any tearing or stretching down there so I liked having this though because I did have a catheter and I did have a lot of weird things happen down there this was just really nice to have and fill with warm water I kept it by the sink in my bathroom because that was the only bathroom I was using and and it just helps when you are maybe having a little bit of trouble peeing and you just squirt it as you're peeing and then of course to clean. So I also liked it because even 
though I delivered via a C-section, I was having um, spotting and bleeding as well as discharge. So you're gonna wanna clean real nice, especially if you're not able to um, shower as often or, I don't know, I was showering once a day at least, but I still felt kinda gross throughout the day, so this just really made things a lot nicer. I felt cleaner, it was more hygienic, I felt like, and it definitely was a must have for me, and make sure you use nice warm water. It feels so much nicer with warm water than cold water because some days I was so tired I wasn't paying attention and I just filled it with cold water and it definitely was not as pleasant. So highly recommend. I'm actually gonna keep this around because I think it's good to have even like that time of the month. I'm like, I'm, I'm thinking about investing in a bidet now. And of course, if it's not in your budget to pick one of these up, don't worry. The hospital will send you home with some. The hospital will send you home with pads as well as the mesh underwear. Um, the hospital will send you home with what you might need in the initial first like 24 hours. And this one is definitely just an upgrade, but I do recommend splurging. It's like 15 to $18 just to get the Perry bottle alone. Or you can get the labor and delivery kit, which if you're going to be delivering vaginally or even going to start pushing, highly recommend the Frida Mama labor and delivery kit. It has everything you possibly need. However, if you are planning a C-section or if you know the C-section is going to most likely happen, then just get the Peri bottle because I didn't end up using the mesh underwear. I didn't use any of the uh, hot cold pads. Um, so a lot of things I'm going to end up giving to a friend who's also going to be having a baby in a couple months. Talking about delivery and peri bottles. The next thing I recommend is having a variety of pads. I had a lot of adult diapers ready because I had every intention of delivering vaginally and that didn't happen. I didn't even get to the point of starting to push. So I did have bleeding and all I had were diapers, which I didn't really need because I wasn't bleeding that much. So when you have a C-section, they clean out a lot of the blood and a lot of the gunk. So you'll have bleeding, but it's just not gonna be quite as intense as if you delivered vaginally. And even if you try to start pushing and you ended up with a C-section, they'll end up cleaning out a lot of that stuff. So you don't need the adult diapers necessarily. I did wear them a couple of times just because that was all I had for the first few days. However, the adult diapers were actually irritating my incision area. So it's not something that I'd recommend if you had a C-section. I would opt more for the mesh underwear that the hospital sends you home with if you get a C-section because you want something a little loose and a little more comfortable that's going to be in that incision area. My incision area was really, really low, so the adult diapers really ended up irritating that area, and I immediately went out and I didn't go out. I immediately ordered a bunch of different pads. I ordered a lot of overnight pads from Rayel, and then I ordered the regular pads from Rayel, which I used up so I don't have to show you here, but I'll link it in the description box. And then I just got some regular light pads as things kind of were clearing up and also panty liners, but I already had panty liners. So you just want to have a variety of absorbencies for when you come home because you just don't know what the situation is going to be. I only planned for a heavy, heavy flow and I didn't plan for not having that. So definitely get a variety of pads. And underwear. Postpartum underwear, I didn't realize was this specific, but I was so particular. My regular underwear is all booty bikini briefs, and those were hitting my incision, so it wasn't comfortable to wear those. And then my, um, I tried some of these like fancy lacy postpartum undies that were really cute and they're really comfortable now. But when I was immediately home, it wasn't because the lace was irritating my incision area. And then I had some cheapy uh, high waist ones from Amazon. I didn't like those cause it wasn't like breathable. It didn't feel like cotton and it just didn't feel comfortable on me. So my favorite postpartum recommendation for underwear is going to be the Mother Tucker High waist postpartum underwear. I found these on Amazon, but you can get these on Belly Bandit's website and you can find them wherever. But the reason I recommend these is because they are the perfect amount of high waist. I have a long torso, by the way, that goes over my incision 
doesn't irritate my incision anywhere because the seam is not irritating. It's a very, very small seam that doesn't rub. They fit, they hold my lower belly in a little bit. So there's a little compression, a little support. It also is perfect for my postpartum belly band that I would have over so that this part wouldn't irritate the incision either if it was writing up or writing too low. Sometimes if I was sitting, this might like start writing up. So this was perfect, the perfect combination. And I just loved, loved these that I immediately purchased like three more sets. They come in sets or you can get them separate, but I absolutely love these and I'm still wearing these. These are my favorite undies because they just hold you in. You feel nice and se secure. They're the perfect amount of coverage, great fabric, great material. And the Amazon ones I purchased were similar in design, but not nearly as comfortable and definitely a, not the quality that I wanted in my underwear during recovery. So splurge on the underwear, splurge on the underwear. Breast pads. I didn't need these right away, but once my milk started coming in, I definitely needed these. I'm like a leaky mess. My left boob specifically is always leaking. So for the daytime, I like using something that's a little more reusable. Um, so it's a little more environmentally friendly, cost effective, in the long term. So I invested in these. They're from Lancelin. I'll link them in the description box. The reason I recommend these specifically is because of the teardrop shape. It really sits nicely in your bra, whether you're wearing a more fitted bra or sports bra or something a little more looser. I found that this was the most universally friendly when it came to fitting inside of my bras. I like that there's a little dart in the center because once again, it helps with the fit and it wasn't looking all chunky and weird weird it also didn't slip around as much as some of the other ones I have tried so I highly recommend these I have a set of four so I have eight total I just throw them in the wash on hot water and they're good to go and I reuse those so then I also like having the disposable ones from Lancelin because these are the most absorbent. So overnight I would tuck these into whatever sports bra I'm wearing and it wouldn't sit perfectly but I found that I didn't have like a wet spot when I woke up because they're just a lot more absorbent. And I also did get some um, clogs, like clog ducts. So I didn't want to use anything that wasn't um, disposable while I was making sure I was clearing that up so that it wasn't irritating anything and I wasn't gonna get an infection. I might have been overly cautious. That's just kind of who I am. So anyways, I really recommend these. I love them. They're, they're thin and they're so, so absorbent. So if you have really a lot of leakage from overnight or if you're going to be out and you don't want to bring a bunch of changeable ones you want to just kind of like go toss and go I really recommend these and I'll link them as well I ended up going through an entire box and purchasing more not the most environmental friendly not the most um, cost effective in that sense but I really like these and definitely worth having on hand especially if you're having a lot of um, leakage overnight or when you're trying to like go back to work or something like that it's just a little more convenient Highly recommend investing in a very comfortable nightgown. This one's not super expensive and I ended up buying two from Amazon. This is just a night dress and it has buttons. So the great thing about this is that it's nursing friendly because you can just wear it and then you can unbutton a couple on top and just pull your boob out to feed the baby at any time. The other thing is for postpartum recovery, it's a lot easier than having to take down your shorts or your pants, it just flip the skirt up and take care of business. I just found that this was the most comfortable thing to wear pregnancy and in postpartum recovery. So I really recommend this one. If I can find it online, I will link it. I bought a small and a medium. The small was during the beginning of my pregnancy, but it still fit at the end of my pregnancy and it also fit after delivery. So the medium was just a little more roomier and a lot easier to pull off my shoulder to nurse. So totally up to you and your preferences. This is so comfortable and just easy after you come home.
I also recommend having a robe. This robe was a gift from my sister-in-law and not only was it beautiful, it was very, very comforting and comfortable. So depending on where you live and how cold or warm you run, I highly recommend getting a robe that's gonna make you feel really comfortable and cozy. This layered over my nightgown as well as just under the covers was plenty. I just felt prettier. Um, I also just really, needed an extra layer if I was getting up to go to the bathroom or going downstairs to get a water or to put my breast milk in the fridge if I was pumping. It's just something I think is necessary and makes you feel a little bit nicer. So invest in a robe that not only is practical, but that's going to make you feel pretty. I know it seems silly, but you'll get it. <laughs> you'll, you'll get it in postpartum. Now this is not something that you can use necessarily right away. Make sure you get clearance from your doctor or the surgeon, but I highly recommend Derma E Scar Gel. This is all natural, clean, organic, cruelty-free, also quite affordable. This is something I have in the house at all times, but really lately because of that C-section incision, I apply it twice a day and massage the scar gel into that incision area to hopefully minimize the scar and help its healing. So this is something I started using as soon as I got the clearance from my doctor and I also apply vitamin E on top of it. She recommended using a vitamin E oil and massaging the incision so that it would start to soften up and just look a little less um, scar-esque. I'm always, I'm gonna have a scar guys, but doing the best to make the scar as small and less angry looking as possible. So these two I highly recommend. Um, you can find this at Target, Sprouts, Whole Foods. You can order it on their website. If you guys don't know, I am a squad member for Derma E in 2020 as well as into 2021. And these two items have been a lifesaver. I just like that this is simple, 100% vitamin E, scar gel. Nothing weird, nothing crazy. The final item I have to share with you that's more of a self-care item but also makes sense for c-section or postpartum recovery is my wild linguasa now i love my wild linguasa and i definitely splurged on this during my pregnancy because i really enjoyed giving myself pregnancy facials at home and just taking time to self-care and relax i think 2020 we all kind of did that and i was pregnant for the entire part of 2020 pretty much and I didn't realize how much I was going to use this in my postpartum recovery. So because I had a lot of swelling and discomfort and achiness, I just have been using my Wild Lane Squassa religiously. I use it on my face and I share with you on my Instagram a lot on how I use it, but even just two minutes, it really makes a huge difference. And so I just would kind of do lifting and drainage techniques right after my skincare. Whenever I get to my skincare, sometimes it's in the morning, sometimes it's not till in the afternoon, but I do make the effort to do it. And then I also would use this on my uh, knuckles and my hands because I had a lot of swelling, a lot of joint pain, a lot of muscle aches right after postpartum and even four weeks, six weeks into postpartum, I was still dealing with a lot of that. It's starting to get better. We figured out my nutrition and kind of what I was missing. But when you are recovering, your body is going through hormone dumps as well as hormone withdrawal. Your body just went through a marathon. And if you are nursing and breastfeeding, your body is taking all of that nutrients for the baby first and then giving you what's left. So if you're not eating enough, and specifically if you're not getting the right nutrients in your system, you are going to start feeling it. And that was what I was experiencing. So this has been helpful helping not only like drain the excess fluid and the swelling, it also was just helping with some of the muscle discomfort until I figured out like what was causing it and fixing it that internally. Really, really love this, highly, highly recommend. Now two things that I have to recommend for your postpartum recovery for everybody, and this isn't just if you had a C-section, um, but it's not something that's necessarily tangible. The first thing is meal prep, 
food prep. And what I mean by that is have a game plan for when you come home and you need food. It's really hard to plan out when you go into labor, especially if you are kind of waiting for labor to happen. Now, if you have a scheduled C-section, that makes things a lot easier and you can make sure your fridge is full of fresh food as well as frozen meals prepped ahead of time. We couldn't really plan for fresh food. We were just always making sure our, our fridge was stocked with our necessities but we were waiting for me to go into labor naturally. However, you could have a lot of frozen foods planned. Now, I don't have a huge freezer, and that was something that we did have. We had some frozen foods in the freezer, but we weren't able to have a ton. So if you have an extra freezer, or if you have a neighbor that has freezer space, definitely plan out some fresh foods, meal prep, and freeze that. It will be a lifesaver. I cannot stress that enough. Part of your postpartum recovery is making sure you have lots of nutrient dense foods and you really want fresh home cooked things whenever possible. Opt in for a meal delivery service like Home Chef or um, Blue Apron or something like that that can be delivered quickly to your home and that you can make within 30 minutes. Even that sometimes isn't possible in the first few weeks. So ask for Grubhub gift cards, ask for local restaurant delivery gift cards, ask friends and family to maybe deliver food to you if that's possible. We don't have a lot of friends and family nearby, but we did have one friend drop off frozen soups every so often, and that was a huge, huge lifesaver. We had friends drop off our food for us at lunch. They would go and pick up food and drop it off for us, and that, again, was a huge, huge lifesaver because otherwise, a lot of the times, we would not get to lunch until dinner time, and by then, it's dinner time, and I wasn't getting enough food in my system, and I wasn't eating enough, and when I was eating, it it wasn't necessarily the most balanced foods in the first few weeks and that I was paying for later on with all of the pain I experienced at five weeks postpartum. So food is very important. Have a game plan and make sure you nourish your body. I love bone broths. Bone broths are great in electrolytes. It's great in collagen. It has protein as well. Um, women need a lot more protein during pregnancy and it goes into postpartum. So eat a lot of real protein. Eat a lot of veggies, green juices. Um, I've been using my Vejo blender a ton with their green pods because two green pods are all the greens recommended for a day. And of course, I'm also eating greens. And when you do have the time to cook, make a huge batch and just have it ready for you. So quick, easy, um, ask for help, ask for meal delivery uh, gift cards and just ask for help. Ask for help when it comes to food because you will not have time to to eat like you used to. So those are all of my C-section postpartum recovery must-haves. I hope it was helpful. I hope if you are planning to have a C-section that you have a smooth C-section and that these items are able to help you or they were able to give you an idea of what to prep for in terms of your postpartum recovery. If you're watching this video because you're just worried, that's great. I wish I watched more C-section recoveries and more C-section videos when I was pregnant so that I could prep for it. The odds of you having a C-section if you are healthy and going into labor naturally are very low. It does happen, so it's important to maybe think about it and prep for it, but just know that my situation is not necessarily going to be yours. I just wanted to share with you guys some of my must-have items that made my unplanned C-section more comfortable and definitely um, happier, if that's a thing. And items that I would want to have with me if I had another C-section. And if I had a friend having a C-section or even having a baby, I would make sure these items were kind of available to her so that in case she had a C-section, but even if not, these items are great to have for vaginal delivery as well. So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe for new videos weekly and catch me over on Instagram for daily updates. I love chatting with you guys over there on Instagram stories and even in my 
my feed. So I try to reply to every comment, every direct message, and I just love communicating with you guys because I think this community is so important and so fun. And for me, it's kind of the only social outlet I have right now. So thank you so much for being a part of my community. And I'll see you guys back here in my next video. Bye.